The purpose of this video and code file is to demonstrate that regression and ANOVA are exactly the same thing. It's a question I commonly get in statistical consulting. Should I run an ANOVA or a regression? Um, and the answer is that you can do one or the other. They're exactly the same model. I like to think of ANOVA as a way of formatting the output from a regression, but I suppose you could also say that the traditional regression output is just a way of formatting the output from an ANOVA. Either way, they're the same model, um, but the defaults, the conventions associated with ANOVA and the defaults or conventions associated with regression are just different. There's different choices of tests um, that are shown with each of these. So what I'm going to do here is use a particular built-in data set um, in a particular R package to try to convince you that this is true, that ANOVA and regression are actually running the same model, but there are just different defaults in terms of the, the p-values tests that are displayed. The data set that I'm going to use is called msleep, and it's a data set that's built into the R package ggplot2. Uh, this is not a tutorial about ggplot2. You don't have to know how to use ggplot2 at all to be able to um, use the data set. All you have to do is open the package. So in my um, R console right now, I have already installed the package on my computer, but I'm going to go ahead and run the line for the library ggplot, which means that I now have um, the msleep data set available to me. So for example, I can look at it, let um, me make this window a little bit smaller, I can look at it and see um, that the number of dimensions, the dimensions are 83 rows and 11 columns. And if I want to, I can look at the first six rows. And this gives me a better sense of what's in this data set. Um, you can see there's some animals in here. So um, I've got some names of some animals. I seem to have some information about the genus and the order. I have the vor, so this refers to a carnivore, an omnivore, or an herbivore. Additional information um, about conservation. I'm not sure just looking at it what that is at this moment. And then some information about sleeping, about brain weight, and about body weight. And there's also some missing data here. Uh, I can see all that just from looking at the beginning of the data set. Similarly, I can look at the end of the data set. It looks similar. You can see there's additional animals here. If I really want to know what's going on in this data set, I should look at the help page. So I'm just pointing out to you as a reminder that you can do that. This is a list of all of the um, variables in the data set and here there's not much of a description but there's something short um, it says that some of this information was added from wikipedia it looks like there's um, not much more to um, not much more available in terms of a code book that is right here um, the variables that we're going to focus on here are sleep total so how many hours of sleep does each animal get we're going to look at vor so is it a carnivore carnivore an omnivore or an herbivore uh, and we're also going to look at body weight and awake, how much time is spent awake. Those are the variables that I'm going to focus on just for the purpose of this illustration. I can summarize the whole data set and see these. And of course, the character variables, such as the name of the animal, don't, aren't summarized. Um, but the uh, numeric variables are summarized here. So I can see, for example, that in this data set, uh, the median total amount of sleep is 10.10. .10. I'm going to do something I usually don't like to do in my own data analysis, and that's attach the data set. That means that I'll be able to access the variables um, without first typing in msleep dollar sign, and I'm going to do that just for ease uh, since I'm focusing on only this one data set throughout this part of the tutorial. First thing I'm going to do is look at a plot of body weight and sleep total. For most of this code file, I'm going to be considering sleep total the outcome variable, and I'm going to try to predict it using various predictors. So if I make a, pl a scatter plot of body weight and sleep total, looks like this. And you can see that perhaps some transformations would be helpful here, which isn't surprising since these are measurements that have to be positive. We see that we have a lot of animals with very low body weights. So I'm going to try some logging. I might um, log sleep total. That looks perhaps better, not much better. And then I'm going to try logging both. And aha, that looks much better. In fact, this looks like something I might want to fit a line to, uh, which is indeed what I plan to do. I'm going to make this plot one more time to show another variable, this vor variable, and I'm not going to add in the legend um, yet, but I just want you to see that now I have um, displayed the relationship between bo log body weight and log sleep total, um, as well as vor, uh, because each point is now colored according to which type of vor it is. And if I were to add in a legend, then this would be a plot that was showing the relationship between two different predictive variables in the outcome, even though it's just two dimensional. Uh, so it's nice to remember that color is an additional dimension. Here I'm just going to create new variables equal to log body weight and log sleep total so that I can access those easily. Um, the other thing I need to do is make vor a factor. So if you remember, when we summarized vor along with some of these other 
um, names, etc., of the animals, it wasn't summarized here. In other words, all it's telling me is the length and the fact that it's a character variable and character variables aren't summarized. But I know that vor um, takes on particular values. So for example, I know that I should be able to do this. And it is indeed true that it takes on only a certain number of particular values, but because it's currently stored as a character variable instead of a factor variable, I'm not able to do things like run regressions on it. So I'm gonna turn vor into a factor. Now that it's a factor, I can look at the relationship between log sleep and vor, using vor as the predictor. And here we go. So we've got carnivores, herbivores, insectivores, and omnivores. And um, the y-axis is not labeled, but the log number of hours of sleep that they get. You can see there does seem to be some variation. Um, mostly that insectivores seem to get more sleep. So I can summarize this vor variable now. And importantly, I use summary here instead of table because by default, the summary command will also tell you how many NAs there are. The table command won't do that. And I can see there are seven animals for which vor is NA. So this is not a video about missing data, but when you have a categorical data, um, categorical variable with some missingness, one option that I like is to just create another category called missing. Uh, so I'm gonna do that here. Because it's a factor variable, I have to add missing as one of the levels. So first I'll just say, what are the different levels of vor right now? And here they are. And now I'm going to reassign the levels of vor to be equal to the previous levels of vor concatenated together with missing. In other words, I want this to be the set of possible things that the vor variable could be equal to. So I'm gonna run this line. And now I haven't changed the vor variable, but what I've done is increase the number of possible values that this variable can take on. Um, and now I'm going to say vor, where vor was previously NA should now be missing. And if I do that, then when I summarize it, um, there's no longer an NA, um, NA place, but rather missing is just one of the five categories, uh, which means I won't have to drop units as I continue. And now I can make a box plot of log sleep by vor and there we go. And so I can see that um, this is the distribution of log sleep for the animals for whom vor status was missing. All that was data cleaning, just a little bit of data cleaning to get us started so that we can start modeling. The first set of models that I'm gonna run, or actually one model, but um, as both an ANOVA and a regression, is going to be log sleep predicted by vor. Before I actually run a model, let's just look at the mean of log sleep um, by vor. I'm going to use the by command to do that. If I look at the output, what I've got is the vor listed, so carnivore, herbivore, insectivore, omnivore, missing vor. And for each of those, the mean log of sleep has been calculated. So ideally, if I'm going to predict log sleep using vor, my prediction should be whatever this mean is. In other words, this is what I'm hoping my model will output. It is what my model will output. If a new animal shows up and I find out that animal is an herbivore, my prediction should be this value because that's all the information that I have um, if I'm only using vor as a predictor. So again, we've already done this, but I'm gonna make a box plot because if you're gonna run an ANOVA um, or a regression, since it's the same thing, of uh, outcome variable on a factor, um, box plots are one of the best ways to go. So I can see this pattern Right? I can try to decide whether I think the constant variance assumption is true, the normality assumption. Um, here, I'm not going to worry about either of those things too much. Um, if this were my actual data set, I, I might go ahead and continue with both those um, assumptions made here because I know that the method of um, regression is fairly robust to the normality assumption. Um, and I'm not that worried about the constant variance given the small sample size, but um, you know, it, the point here is not to analyze this data, but to demonstrate some characteristics of regression and ANOVA.